Get ready for yet another completely objective, totally unbiased review from a guy named Metalhead of Iron Maiden. You know it's a good day for me when we come back to do some Maiden. And I thought it'd be fun to pick an album that a lot of people really overlook, which is kind of weird because probably their number one popular song, The Trooper, is on here. I found a lot of comparisons between Power Slave and this one, and I know this came right before Power Slave, so this really sounded a lot like the foundation of what we heard on that album. One thing that really stands out for me on this album is I think the artwork. I, I think I you've said that in about every fucking Iron Maiden <laughs> video that we've done ever. Once we do Dance of Death, that's when I'll have the most to say. So without further bullshit, where eagles dare. What a way for Nico to introduce himself with a tasty fill to start off his maiden career. I know this is his first album with them. A lot of similarities between this one and Los For Words, I found. Drum beat, similar guitar, really draws that comparison for me. Every band has a lineup that's by far the all-star cast of their careers, and I think it's easily this group, of course. Janet Gers is very talented as well, but this is really the group we know Maiden for. A lot of fans think that Nico brought more technicality towards the bands. Not that Clive wasn't a good drummer, but I think Nico help bring them to that next level. Adrian Smith and Dave Murray harmonizing perfectly and taking turns doing the leads and just exploding your drums. Absolutely, I was just gonna say that. While you have such an all-star cast, I think the biggest asset of the group are the two guitarists. While most bands have the traditional rhythm and lead, Dave and Adrian are pretty much two lead guitarists. A lot of times new members have the new guy syndrome where they play it safe and kind of back off for most of the record. Nico does the total opposite, flexing the agility and keeping up with Steve the entire song. Exactly. He had an interview where he said it's it's hard enough I have to keep up with Steve. I can't be doing some of my own stuff sometimes. The song is the standard Maiden format with the quick snappy intro, prominent bass, big vocals, and harmonizing guitars. This is one of the most Maiden songs I've ever heard. I give it a seven. A seven and a half. It's a nice refresher for Maiden on just the second track with a more slowed down pace and Bruce's style made me feel like I was listening to Dio or Judas Priest for a second. Guitars are more majestic on this one, making you feel like you're on an epic voyage to go fuck up the French for dissing the Queen or some shit. Originally, I wasn't a huge fan of this song. I was only about the traditional Maiden, which you summarized pretty well with the... I <laughs> <laughs> they had that one. So when I heard the beginning, I was like, oh, skip. But after seeing it live, I thought, damn, you know, this song is actually uh, pretty fire. The harmonization of the guitars, the switching off, and the mid part where Steve playing these bass riffs that most bass players would be afraid to even look at on a music sheet. Not always a huge fan of the shattering glass singing, but he does. I think he has the perfect mix on here. They change the pace early on, but they're able to keep and maintain that more majestic laid back feel while doing so and giving you something different in the second slowdown with the acoustic ringing in the front. A powerful and simultaneously majestic roller coaster ride. So much much diversity in sound, yet it keeps a rock solid structure the entire runtime. Probably my favorite Bruce performance, like we were just talking about, as he matches the different tones nicely and paints vivid pictures with his storytelling. You had a prediction before we started that this would be my favorite. This is tied for my first favorite on oh. the record. So you got that. You got that. I, I gave this one an eight. I think I know what the first one is then if I give it a nine. Actually, when we did our Led Zeppelin video, you asked why that was on my shirt. Uh, that's Icarus, which was the story of... The Dickless Fairy? The Dickless Fairy, that that's Icarus. Yeah, I remember yeah. that now. You know, he got these wings, and he was like, Hell yeah, I'm like hot shit. Like, fuck you bitches, I can fly. And then they're like, oh, make sure you don't get too cock... Don't fly too close to the sun. And then, of course, he's like, Psh, I'm he just He lost gonna. his cock. Yeah he, yeah, he flew too close to the sun, his cock melted off, and then his wings... <laughs> this one isn't one of my favorites, but Bruce, I think he might have went to the gym and exercised his voice, especially the ending. I don't know what you thought. I talked about my preference for Diano's vocal style in the past, but one thing you have to give Bruce over him is his presence. Bruce absolutely commands any song with his powerful voice, regardless of what's happening in the background, and that's very evident on this one. This so. one, I don't know if I would say repetitive, maybe slightly. Bruce's performance save this song big time for me. Again, with the Power Slave comparisons, there are definitely shades of Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner in this one, specifically the beginning with Bruce's vocal style and again, the galloping rhythm. It's a short one. Instrumentally, it's a return to the staple Maiden sound that we've heard with the opener and other Maiden records. So I give this one a seven. A seven as well. 
seven. This is a sing-along song if I've ever seen one from Maiden. It's a cool saying though, honestly, when you think about it, to die with your boots on instead of, you know, to go out fighting instead of just being like in bed. And die that's with what, your slippers on. Die with your slippers on, yeah. This is definitely one tailored more to the hardcore Maiden fan as it contains all the Maidenisms of a brief intro, steady energy level, Bruce's heavy tremolo, and the second half solo. The biggest standout I think on this one has to be Steve and Nico with Nico's heavy ride symbol use and Steve cutting right through the guitars even during both the guitar solos with a really cool lick. Mm -hmm. I gave this one a 7. Definitely not one of the more standout ones, but I think definitely a popular sing-along one. Nico and Steve, like you said, worked perfectly. So I would have to give this one a 7 as well. Yeah. I'll take my life and I'll take yours too! Da, 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 da. Fire musket, but I've... <laughs> I forgot to bring down the Trooper beer, which everybody should go purchase, even if you're underage. Another pure energy, you know, explosion. <laughs> Sing your heart out. Talk about murdering each other. If anybody did it perfectly, I think Iron Maiden did. Even if some Maiden fans might get irritated at the song, as many fans get irritated by the band's most popular selection, it's a great selection to represent Maiden to the mainstream. The galloping beat, which Maiden's famous for, the unrelenting energy, the English theme of war, the song perfectly summarizes exactly what Maiden is all about. Everything from the opening riff to the first lyrics have become iconic parts of not just metal but rock in general. The song is packed with detail with vivid imagery and the lyrics, vocal flange and the hook and staple guitar harmonies. Even if it's not their absolute greatest, it's a perfect gateway drug to the rest of Maiden's discography. Seven and a half. That is a good way to put it. Gateway yeah. drug. Even though it is the mainstream simple song, it still has the Maiden technicality in there that makes it stand out. And eight and a half. Adding cool sounds like this to a song gives it such a cool feel, which is funny because that's actually Nico making fun of that cryptic messaging in songs, so they must yeah. not be big Tool fans. I don't think anyone has ever squeezed a cat on a Maiden record, right? No, not that I'm aware of. This one isn't really one that stands out also on here, but it's I thought Steve. it was a standout. You thought it was a standout? I thought, yeah, especially the intro. The plucks and the warm rumbling guitar make like an yeah. insane combo, especially with the background layer of Nico's hi-hat and Steve's bass. Probably my favorite Maiden intro ever, honestly. Really? Favorite yeah. main intro over Stranger in a Strange Land? Yeah. Caught somewhere in time? Mm hmm. What about Prodigal Song? Yeah. Shit. So this okay. is better. Your points did make a lot of perfect sense. Uh, for me personally, I, I think other ones stood out more. But in terms of actual individuality, uh, yeah, I would have to agree. This one had its uh, fair share of different sounds. The clean guitar tone was heavenly, not to mention Steve's iconic tone that seems to just go with everything, whether he's playing with Bob Dylan or fucking Meadow or some shit or playing with Megadeth. <laughs> when I met in the song Stands Out, I mostly was talking about the intro because for the second half, we returned to the <laughs> I give this one a seven and a half. Seven. Join my quest for fire. I wrote like two things about this, so. If you want to go ahead and start us off. The musicianship on this song is really what made it stand out for me. I love the beginning with Nico hitting the drum once to signal the start of the song, and then the bass guitars and the drum all do the scale, and then it goes back into the gallop, you know, which I know is your favorite style. Another powerful storytelling song from Maiden as they keep their foot on the gas the whole song, and, uh, you know, the formula. I feel like I reviewed the song at least three times already. I'll <laughs> stick with those ratings with the seven. Seven and a half. As I understand from our Guess the Song series, this is your absolute favorite on the record, so why don't you tell us in detail why? I was just thinking that. I was like, this is the one I missed on the Guess the Song. So, besides, besides being, being a pilot, pilot and a singer, singer Bruce, Bruce Dickinson, Dickinson is he's also passionate about fencer, fencing. Which, this is another song that he wanted to talk about, being a fencer. It's just not one of the ones that, you know, when I pop, when I grab my Peace of Mind CD right here, I don't immediately skip to track eight. You know, it's not in terms of any a bad song at all. It's, it follows the main formula of the gallop, and it's just not really one that sticks out to me as a top tier Maiden song. I didn't think there was anything too bad to make this stand out as my one of my least favorites, even though I do think this is probably now the fourth time that I'm reviewing the same song. Even the songs on here that I'm just kind of like, whatever about, they're all really well done. That's why they're sevens. Like, if it were all exactly. just the same shit nonstop, it'd be like a three. I give it a seven. I'd probably give six and a half. So the deal. I always think it's awesome when a legendary band can show respect to another one by doing an awesome cover. 
That's why I thought it was awesome that Iron Maiden decided to cover this Dream Theater song. They nailed it and came really close to the original. I was actually surprised to see Dream Theater pick this song. I thought they would have picked Rhyme. Why, because it's 18 hours long? Yeah. It just stands out so much compared to every other track. Perfect opening riff that gives you that awesome feel to it as it builds up into the main part. Obviously, this was my most familiar song going into this one, even more so than The Trooper. The opening riffs on both bass and guitar are iconic. Nico adding in the subtle details around the intro. Again, the guitar work stands out, especially after the first verse with the tone on the lead, which uh, Jordan actually turned into a sitar in the Dream Theater version, which I thought fit perfectly. Bruce also kills it, especially when he hits that high note right before the instrumental bridge, which itself is stellar. Outstanding conclusion to a great record. I give this one an eight. I was kind of getting overwhelmed with, like you said, reviewing the same song four times. A complete breath of fresh air when this song comes on, especially to end the album. I'm gonna give this... A nine. Overall, this is an overlooked Maiden album. Most people see Number of the Beast and then go right to Power Slave. This is a great addition to their work. On their fourth album, it's clear you can start to hear the development of the classic sound that they're known for. Obviously, this gave us the Trooper and To Tame a Land. I think it's honestly one of the most diverse albums that I've heard from Maiden so far and is my second favorite Maiden album. So I give this one a seven and a half. Wow, second favorite? Yeah, we, I've only I've only done the four so far. I still think their best is Number of the Beast, which I'm sure we'll do someday. A little worried this... about that one. I know. I have That's some controversial I... opinions on that one. I give this one a solid seven and a half.